VMS shipped with zero bugs. Does that how on the much day, that is? On the day we shipped VMS, there were zero known bugs. That didn't mean there were no, no there were no bugs, because there were bugs. But but there's a big difference between shipping uh, a system with twenty thousand known bugs that that some product prog program manager said, well, you know, we've looked at this and it doesn't meet the bar. That used to just drive me just batty. Right. Uh, I wanted every bug fixed, every bug. And, it, you know, it would get so depressing as we're going through the, the um, Windows, the NT releases where we have this war room every morning, you know, and you fix, you fix uh, 200 bugs in a day. Next day, there's 200 new bugs every single day for months. We made a real effort to fix every bug that we knew about before we said, okay, we'll ship this. And there, I know there was a last minute bug. We had a race condition in a, a channel hole or handoff that occurred in one of the disk drivers um, that we fixed like in the 11th hour, but there were zero known bugs. At the time we shipped. I mean, but you were schedule driven as opposed to, you didn't have to make Christmas for deck, obviously, or that kind of thing. No, but the thing that we were, the thing that, that happened there, um, I guess you, you could really say we were schedule driven because, you know, the success of the company was selling hardware. It wasn't selling VMS. Right. And we couldn't sell the hardware without the operating system to run on it. So as soon as manufacturing is ready to start pumping these systems out, now you've got inventory, you've got customers who bought machines, you want to have the, the software to run on them. And, right. and in fact, that we actually gave early VAX hardware to and to help us develop things. One was Schlumberger. Schlumberger was putting VAXs in in semi-tractor semi trailer trucks and carting around the U.S. taking data on oil well. Oh, really? Right? They were, you know, they send a, a instrument bundle down the, the, the uh, casing, and I don't know, they set off explosions or what they did, and then get all that data. They collect it all on the axe and then process it. So Schlumberger was one, and the other one was... Um, the um, related to the naval, it wasn't the Naval Academy, but it was some other naval organization. And we had we had two software support specialists at each one of those customers, and they would sort of be the people that that would take the the updates. You know, we update the system not as often as we update the systems at Microsoft when we're doing development, which is basically every day. But you know, we we get to a point we we operate in what we call base levels, which was we when we planned the. At the beginning, we set out what the base levels were, and this is the base level of functionality that we try to reach by a certain point, and we wouldn't we wouldn't go on to other stuff until we reached that point. So there's various base levels. So as these came out, uh, you know, people would get upgraded, and they only got the functionality that was in the base level. So and customers generally were at the other end of that, where they get much more capability. But um, you know, there's things. Uh, I don't know. We rally ran for a year where the system was actually usable. You know, we could, we did the development on that system. Right. And it was reliable enough that it didn't crash that often. Um, uh, as far as stress on it, we didn't really probably stress it that badly because, you know, there's, I don't know, 24 to 30 people sitting around, you know, plinking on keys. Right. Now we had... We had better terminals then. We had we had uh, CRT terminals with keyboards that didn't require a pound of force to for, to, to push down the keys. You ever push down a key in a JSR thirty three? Yeah, the round post. There weren't there weren't any speed typers in those days. No. 